All right. So today we're diving into Kai VA. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's going to speak to the software enthusiast in you, I think. Right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So you know those terminal applications that are just lines of code. Right. Kai VA takes things to a whole new level. It does. We're here to kind of break down why it's so cool. Awesome. Um, and maybe for anyone who's new to this whole audio visualizer thing. Yeah. It basically turns your music into a moving picture. Mm -hmm. Think of those pulsing bars that react to the beat. That's what we're talking about. Exactly, exactly. And what's really neat about Kai VA is that it's not just about seeing some basic visuals bounce around to your music. Right. It's about having the power to tweak, customize, and really mold that visual experience to your liking. Oh, okay. We're talking cross-platform compatibility, a ridiculous oh. amount of customization. Okay. And a level of control that you, as someone who appreciates the ins and outs of software, right. are going to love. Okay, so you're saying Shiage takes it way further. Exactly. And Kava A being open source means you're not just stuck with someone else's idea of how your music should look. Yeah. You can get your hands dirty and control everything from the colors and shapes mm -hmm. to the way it responds to different frequencies. And speaking of getting our hands dirty, the GitHub README is our guide here. Yeah. They jump right in with a what it is section. Pretty straightforward bar spectrum visualizer. Works on a bunch of operating systems. Yeah, lots of them. But then they hit us with this line, not for scientific use. Right. What's that all about? That line tells us that she ABA is all about giving you the tools to create an awesome visual experience. It's not designed for perfect accuracy or technical analysis of the music. Mm -hmm. It's about aesthetics, responsiveness, and customization. Okay, I can already see how this would appeal to someone who loves to tinker with code. Absolutely. Now, I took a peek at the installation instructions. Okay. And let me tell you, they're extensive. Yeah, yeah, they can be a bit daunting, that's for sure. It's exciting to see so many options. It is. But I have to admit, it's a little intimidating. I hear you, but the good news is, yeah. no matter what operating system our listener is rocking, right. CIVA has them covered. Okay. Whether it's Debian, Ubuntu, FreeBSD, Mac OS, or even Windows, mm -hmm. the installation process is laid out in detail. So let's break this down a bit. Break if it. our listener is running, say, Ubuntu, sure. what are they getting themselves into? Well, you'll need a few essential packages, things like Build Essential, FFTW, that's for the fast Fourier transform calculations going on behind the scenes. Right. Then, of course, there's the audio processing libraries. Okay. And this is where it gets interesting. Because it's not as simple as just playing music. Right. CIVA needs to actually grab that audio to make it dance. You got it. Okay. The way CIVA captures audio is actually one of the things that makes it so flexible. Mm. They've got support for pulse audio, which is pretty common. Okay. Pipewire, another popular option, uh -huh. and even more specialized methods. Wait, hold on. Yep. Before we go down that rabbit hole, let's make sure our listeners up to speed. Okay. These names, they might sound like gibberish. Right. If you're not familiar with audio on Linux. Good point. Yeah. Pulse Audio and Pipewire. Yeah. Think of them like the software that manages your sound on a lot of Linux systems. Okay. They act as a middleman between your applications and your speakers. Huh? Key IVA can hook into them to grab the audio before it reaches your ears. Okay, that makes sense. Right. Now, I saw something about ALSA in there as well, yes. which I know can be a bit more, well... A bit more involved. Involved, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. ALSA, now we're talking about granular control. Okay. See, ALSA doesn't have a built-in way to grab audio that's already playing. Right. That's where things like setting up a loopback interface come in. I can already see you getting excited about the technical details. Just a bit, just a bit. But before we dive into the nitty gritty. Yeah. What does this actually mean for our listener? What's the takeaway here? You're absolutely right. It's all about options and control. Mm -hmm. With ALSA, you have to route the audio back into itself so KVA can snag it. Right. It's a bit more setup. Okay. But hey, more power to you, right? And it doesn't stop there. Yeah. We've got AMBD, Semidio, JCK. Yeah. The list goes on. Exactly. Each of these audio capture methods has its own quirks and advantages. Right. This isn't about overwhelming you with options. Mm -hmm. It's about providing the flexibility to tailor CAVA to your specific setup and preferences. Okay. Okay, so we've navigated that installation maze. Right. Which is a feat in itself. It can be, yeah. But let's be honest, the real fun for someone like you, someone who loves that elegance of a well-crafted config file, is about to begin. Absolutely, you're spot on. So Key AVA is all about customization. Yeah. And the way they've structured their config system 
really highlights that mm. they've gone with a dedicated configuration file. Right. Instead of relying on a bunch of command line arguments. Yeah, exactly. It shows they expect users to really want to dig in and make it their own. They know, yeah. Absolutely. They've even built in this cool feature called reload signals. Oh, yeah. For those power users out there, it means you can tweak your config on the fly. Nice. No need to restart the whole program. Yeah, very cool. Talk about a smooth workflow. For sure, it's those little touches that really demonstrate that the developers understand their audience. Right. They know that people who gravitate towards audio visualizers often have that tinkerer mindset. Right. You know? Okay, so enough about the how. Let's get into the why. Okay. What kind of sorcery can we conjure up in this config file? Lots. I'm particularly interested in the equalizer section. Oh, nice. I mean, who doesn't love fine-tuning how their music sounds? Right, but here's where it gets even cooler. Okay. This isn't just about adjusting bass or treble. Mm -hmm. CAVA's equalizer lets you fine-tune how different frequency ranges are represented visually. Oh, wow. It's about shaping the entire look and feel of your visualizer. Correct. They even provide an example in the README. Okay. Something like EQ, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4 is 1, 5 was 5, 5, 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. And just seeing that, I bet you can already imagine how much more dynamic and visually interesting that would be compared to just a flat spectrum. It's like giving your music a visual personality. Exactly. And speaking of aesthetics, I remember there was this whole thing with CAVA and how it handled gradients in the terminal. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Ah, yes, the infamous gradient bug. Right. What was that all about? It's actually a great example of how even seemingly simple things can become surprisingly complex in the world of software development. Okay. You see, terminals, believe it or not, yeah. aren't exactly designed with complex color gradients in mind. Interesting. Yeah. But the good news is they squashed that bug. They did. And now that color section is your playground. It is. Want a visualizer that throbs with neon pink and electric blue? Go for it. Exactly. It goes back to that not for scientific use idea. Okay. Key AVA gives you the freedom to create something visually stunning and unique. Right. Even if that doesn't perfectly represent the audio frequencies from a purely technical standpoint. And then there's this intriguing option called raw output. Yes. Which I'll be honest, sounds a bit a little raw. Well, raw. Yeah. yeah. What's the deal with that? Now, this is where things get really interesting, Okay. especially for someone like you who loves exploring the potential of software. Right. Raw output essentially lets KeyAVA spit out the visualizer data in a way that other programs can understand. Oh, okay. Imagine using KeyAVA to drive the lighting in your game or syncing it up. Hold on, hold on. I game. can already see the gears turning in your head. Always, always. And while that's awesome, let's bring it back down to earth for our listener. Okay, sure. What does this raw output thing actually mean for someone who might not be building the next big game? You're right, back to basics. Yeah. Think of raw output as this. It transforms KVA from a standalone visualizer mm -hmm. into a powerful tool that can be integrated with other software. It opens up a world of possibilities for interacting with your music in ways you might not have even considered. And they're not just leaving you hanging with this feature. No, not at all. They've actually included a Python script example right in the readme. Exactly. It's, it's like a little taste of what's possible. It's a great starting point for anyone who wants to go beyond just watching the pretty bars <laughs> and start exploring how to make CAVA dance with other programs. So we've got customization covered, but there's another section in the readme that caught my eye, CAVA in the wild. Oh, yeah. This suggests there's a whole community out there doing amazing things with this tool. There is, yeah. What kind of things are we talking about? This is where the open source magic really shines. Mm -hmm. Remember, CAVA isn't just a piece of software. Right. It's a community-driven project. The contributions section of the README is a testament to that. Right. They're actively encouraging users not just to use the software, but to help improve it, fix bugs, and even add new features. That collaborative spirit is something I know you, as someone interested in software, can appreciate. Oh, absolutely. It's the lifeblood of open source projects. It goes beyond just contributing to the code base. It does. People are constantly finding new and inventive ways to incorporate CAVA into their own projects. Yeah, for sure. We're talking custom scripts, integrations with other software, right. even hardware hacks. The possibilities are practically endless. They are, yeah. It's like that old saying. Give a man a fish. And he'll ask for tartar sauce. Well, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> yeah. But the point is, CAVA isn't just about the technical aspect. That's not, no. It's about that creative potential it unlocks. Exactly. So hmm. we've explored what CAVA is. Right. How it gives 
you, the user, mm -hmm. a crazy amount of control. Yeah. But before we wrap up our deep dive, okay, let's step back for a second. Sure. Why does this even matter? Right. What's the big deal with a customizable audio visualizer? Yeah. Even for someone who loves to tinker with software. Well, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Yeah. On the surface, it's this neat tool for visualizing your music. All right. But when you start digging into that open source nature, uh -huh. that raw output capability, mm. the potential for integration. Yeah. It sparks a whole new world of ideas. It's about more than just pretty visuals. Exactly. And it, yeah. it really highlights how something seemingly simple can become this incredibly powerful tool in the right hands. Absolutely, yeah. Here's something to consider. Um, yeah. Think about the connection between audio reactive visuals okay. and accessibility for the hearing impaired. Oh, okay. What if you could use Kievye to translate music into something visually engaging, right. creating a whole new sensory experience? Wow. Now that's a deep dive for another day. I never even thought about it like that. Yeah. That's really cool. It's amazing how exploring something as seemingly niche as an audio visualizer right. can lead to these broader insights and possibilities, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, on that note, okay. we're going to wrap up our deep dive into Key IV. Awesome. For our listener out there, the software enthusiast eager to explore new territory. Mm. We hope this has sparked your curiosity. Yeah. Remember, this is just the beginning. It is. The real magic happens when you fire up your terminal. Absolutely. Start experimenting. Get your hands dirty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>